preceded by the one in the first language of the Fiji players. Delhi, Fiji, they have the skill, the explosive speed and power to embarrass anyone, don't they? They certainly do, but England, as I said, I don't think will play into their hands. They can't do. They're an uh, incredible bunch of athletes. Steve Borthwick will know that. This is one day to be tight and hopefully put Fiji away, and then we'll see what England can do. So they're going to be a little bit more pragmatic. Well, always one of the highlights of a test match involving one of the Pacific Island nations is the cultural challenge. Now this is Fiji's Thimby. Well, two players suspended, plus more injuries to key players, as if last week wasn't bad enough for the England coach, Steve Borthwick. There is something to celebrate, though. 14 years after making his test debut, Courtney Laws plays his 100th test for England. In the absence of Owen Farrell, he is the captain. Into the backs, Manitou Alangi and Ollie Lawrence paired in a powerful midfield. Alex Mitchell gets a run at scrum half alongside George Ford. Johnny May starts on the wing. Fiji arrive having given France a decent run last week in Nantes and their pack includes six men who ply their club trade in Europe's two biggest professional leagues. Loose head Aroni Mawi won the premiership here with Saracens in May. It's a back line which can do serious damage if given the chance to counter-attack. In the midfield, Sami Randrandra and Waisia Naithalebu are well known to the England team. Caleb Munts, who missed much of the Super Rugby season, has started every test so far this year. He is the fly half. Now, these are the replacements. And for England, they include Jack Walker, who's poised to make his first competitive appearance for more than four months. Six of the eight Fijians arrive in Europe, having played a full season of Super Rugby 
for the Drua. So Alex Mitchell of Northampton replacing Jack Van Fleet. Very unfortunate for the Leicester scrum half to hurt himself a fortnight ago. But it is an opportunity for Mitchell. He's key. He's got to put pace, pace, pace on the ball. Accurate kicking. They will be kicking in this game. But again, he'll be the, the linchpin, the, the link between forwards and backs always is. And hopefully give George Ford a little bit of space. Familiar face there, Semi Randrandra. Formerly of Bristol. And there's another one. Yaku Paper, who will take charge of the opening match in the World Cup in 13 days' time. Well, Twickenham, England's fortress. In all honesty, in recent months, it has been something of a temple of gloom. Can they lift that gloom this afternoon? Raiders of the last half, my word. Who's going to raid a Fiji in a raid today? Well, I wouldn't say that uh, Steve Borthwick cuts quite the stylish figure of Harrison Ford, but he has got a task that's similar. First carry there from Manatuilangi, half breaking through. There goes Ollie Lawrence inside the Fijian 22. On the evidence of the first 39, 40 seconds, England have learned something in the last week. Steve Borthwick <laughs> saying before kickoff that the attacking element of the game is something that has been the priority. Ford feeds the ball out. There goes Tuolangi again. But it's Fiji who get the first penalty. Data from England, much, much better using those two powerhouses in the midfield. Lawrence and Tuolangi, exactly where you want them coming up direct. Ball coming back at the inside shoulder, holding the Fijian defence. And again, it was just a little bit of indecent. We saw that in Dublin last week. They've got to protect the ball more, England. Get there, get the person, you give that ball, you've got to give that pass, make sure that guy's going to come away. But this is nice. Just a little slip pass from Ben Earl there, too. Lang that's where you want him. Yeah, Hits him back. Just... The ball is quick then for Mitchell, quick then for Ford. And off they go. But unfortunately, they're a good scrum half. Frank Lamani just getting over top of the ball, slowing it up. First test of the Fiji line out, that traditionally one of their weaker elements, but that was fine. There goes a carry from Randrandra. Followers of the Premiership will recognise those. That time it's Mata. Mata, who's been playing his club rugby north of Hadrian's Wall at Edinburgh for a number of seasons, despite the fact 18 of Fiji's World Cup squad do play their rugby for the Fijian Drua. Nine of 15 today starting do play in the European leagues, but it's now Fiji who are penalised. Again, Mata is crucial to them, to Fiji. England doing very well then, slowing that ball and getting that decision from Jakob Paper. They carried the ball 20 times against France. So crucial to have your number eight, and there's the conundrum for England. Nova Napola, well, he will be around. Who's going to fit in? Ben Earl, he's done that for Saracens, he can interlock, he's not an out and out eight, but he'll do the job. And this dot does the job for Fiji, that's good, though they're not, again, you see, no one was with him, he didn't protect. Courtney Laws, it was, wasn't it, on his 100th cap, getting over the ball and doing the job, what a captain should do. Leo Dan getting a start today. Trump. And Definitely that, not straight. Not that's straight. Inside. That's why Jamie George is so crucial to this side. Dan's first start, and the adrenaline's pumping there, and he's slightly got the yips. Well, we saw the skies just ahead of the kickoff, and they were bright and they were blue, but uh, from the north now, there are some pretty ugly looking dark clouds. We are going to get a British summer in one day here. <laughs> And I have brought a coat, but this won't matter. This is key to the, to the to the game today. If the Fiji have got any chance of whatsoever of coming away with a victory, they have to be strong in this department. Frank Lamani and scrum half, who scored two tries in that very impressive victory in Tokyo against no Japan. Place. Bear in mind that Japan are in England's group in the World Cup. In fact, England meet them second up on the... 17th of September, that's a Sunday down in Nice. 
Here's George Ford. To Alangi again. Hard and straight. BG have come offside, so it's a penalty advantage. There is the Odan again, up to the 22. It's a, a free hit, if you like, this time for England. Ford. Here's Freddie Stewart. Naithalevu, the captain, makes the tackle. There's Ford again on to Ben Earl. Ball's gone loose, he went backwards. That's Malins this, this time. Still playing that advantage, Maruatoji taking the contact. Offside, back set the line out. I'm here. Better for England because in Dublin again seven days ago when they were given a penalty they just didn't really want to play. There was a free play there. I'm sure they'll go for three points just to settle everything down. Suck some breath in. But it's a good start. It's a quicker start. Mitchell's getting that ball in from the base of the scrum. It's out in front of Ford and he's using that guy of what he was designed to do. Just crash it up. Suck those Fiji defenders in. There you go. Two big lads. You know, Rabrandra is a superb runner, but he's got to do some tackling today, and it's interesting where they're focusing, in the midfield. That just cl clutches everybody in. The Fijian defence can't take an eye off Tuolangi because of his strength, and then it's quick recycle ball. The rain actually coming down now. Dramatic shift. It really was uh, gorgeous just 15 minutes ago. Comfortable start for the England fly half. All indicators point to this man. Starting those first couple of games in the World Cup in the absence of Owen Farrell, who we now know will be missing for both the Argentina and the Japan matches in France. But again, it all depends on that word I used before, pace, pace, pace. You know, Ford can play. He's, he's a fantastic organiser, but if you're playing no with four, pace, you've got, you've got everything at your feet, in a sense. You can and just call the shots. Minimal. When it slows down, it becomes harder. Take it out. Six minutes gone, and Fiji yet to really get their hands on the ball. Well, that was a fantastic catch. Johnny May, you can see, back in England action. A couple of grabs taken by Ellis Genge, picked up on the half volley by Ford. Bit of space here for Ollie Lawrence. This man can play, believe me. He's more than just a battering ram, terrific hands, used to be a very fine cricketer. There's Theo Dan. Genge. Jack Willis getting a start today. And here's the Centurion, Courtney Laws, and he earned his first cap on this ground. His captain, a certain Steve Borthwick. There's the flying hack. Oh, it's all rather messy. Play on, says the referee. Picked up there by Ollie Lawrence. Well, Malins, just for a moment, was standing without a defender within about 30 metres of him. And the moment the whistle blew there, Malins just tilted his head back as if to say that was a chance wasted. And Ben Earls was there as well. Again, it's a bit of ricochet. He's in front of your kicker. George Ford really, literally pulling all the strings. Goes out to Ollie Lawrence, like he said, he's more than a... <laughs> Just chuck it up plan. into your arm. He's got fantastic hand skills, yeah. but he attracts people again with that. Look at this little step just coming in. He knows he's going to get tackled, but again, there's two people. He's behind the defence, and then uh, things can happen. And then from forward, then just a little dink over the top, keeping Fiji honest all the time, That's trying to think Look where again. the defenders are. Freddie Stewart. Well, we're through eight minutes, and the reason why the camera is dwelling on him now is that it is now six hours of rugby since an England back scored a try, and Freddie Stewart was the man who did it. You remember that, Dowie, here against France when England leaked 50 points and more. The biggest loss ever at Twickenham, yes, I do remember that. It's a good scrum from, from uh, England, off they go again. Another penalty, space here for Johnny May, he takes off towards the line! And Johnny May has ended that backline drought. The Gloucester wing handed a World Cup lifeline by the injury to Anthony Watson. And Johnny May rolling back the years. 
settle the nerves of Twicken and settle his nerves again. And it was uh, a good play from Mitchell. The penalty was coming from that very powerful scrum. Just one out, and you've got to say it's weak tackling, really, from Ravu Thamanda on that right wing. He's gone far too high, and this is an easy score for May in a sense. You shouldn't be bounced off like that. You've got to go lower. You're a big lad, but you'll take it, mate. You'll gift it. Once hand up, use it almost as a springboard to get over the line. Great start from England, and they love it as well. And England back, scores a try. A collector's item. George Ford, not his best connection, but England in front, eight points to nil. But straight away, and it's not just the opposition in Oakfield, you're a T2 opposition, but it's just the, the mindset that England have come into this game. They wouldn't settle for three. Last week, they'll have just been slow. Oh, we'll take three points in front, but no, let's go. Let's see what we can do. We've got advantage from the penalty. Let's put a call out there, let's, whatever it is. He's in heaven. Well, to use a, an athletics analogy, Fiji are still in the blocks, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Beware. Don't poke the bear too early. Let's throw a CC. Pumping it up in the air. Stewart waits for it. He's met by good. two Fijians. One of them was the fullback following up. But England retained possession. Alex Mitchell just doing uh, a bit of organisation. There's Ellis Genge. Use that now. 75% possession England. That's how dominant they've been in these first 10 minutes. Well, Is that forward or wide? Rabu Thamanda unable to gather so that. Mitchell senses as an opportunity. Over. Good vision there from the Northampton scrum half. He's yeah, had an assured off. start. Oh, he can play, mate. He's also very quick. He's getting this ball out. He's got the vision. He knew that that the right winger was up from go. Fiji. There was a gap behind. Keep the pressure on. Started superbly well. The rain is really coming down now, so this will hamper some good handling phases, I'm sure, but they've all got this sticky stuff on their hands these days. Keep the pressure on Fiji. And there you go, pressure on, they've won the line out. Von is right for a knock. Well, that was a missed opportunity from England, because we know that the Fiji line out is vulnerable. You can't take it back, we go for a knock on. Can't take a ball that's out back into a rut. Sam Matabesi, part of the famous Cornwall clan of Matabases, which also include Josh. <laughs> and uh, it, it's a pack so, which is, yeah, I'm okay. talking about the Fiji pack here, which is dominated by players who do ply their trade during the week, if you like, in Europe. They're all experienced European club rugby players. We've got ref cam on you to show the absolutely <laughs> biblical pictures of Twickenham. It really is coming down. Feast of famine from beautiful sunshine to down, an absolute downpour. What are we? August the 26th. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Lenardi there with the put in. Those put ins not like your day, are they? Not the straightest. There goes Lamani getting wrapped up by Mitchell. Well, I was talking to you doing with that amazing game last night here with the Springboks and uh, New Zealand. Who Springboks put New Zealand away with a plomb. How dangerous would that block a scrum, scrum be if, it, if the scrum half, the opposition scrum half, had to put the ball in straight down the middle? Unbelievable. Stewart looks at Malins and says, This is for you ball to chase. The ball, back on and the Malins just got his palm on it. That was good. Here goes Theo Dan, who's so dangerous in open play. Ford, little chip over the top, that's another one for May to get after, it's another tester for the wing, but that time, Rabu Thamanda does enough. Well, he had to do, he had to beat that, beat that May to the ball on that race, that foot race. But again, that's again, it's, it's a very intelligent kick, it's now literally pouring down. So handling is not going to be easy, so you actually put the ball behind. I think this is the third, two boxes and this, this kick now is the third time England have kicked and actually retained the ball. 
that's fine. The kicking game, we all know Borthwick loves the kicking game. Kick the ball a thousand metres per game. You've got put more pressure on the opposition. You, you know, you win more games, and there you go. Release. And I'm just hearing that King kicked 210 metres so far off seven kicks. So that is their game plan, but they've also thought about going a little bit wider and using their backs today, which is good. Well, the conditions must be tougher out there because rather unforced. That was a spill from Freddie Stewart. They don't happen terribly often. Here goes the money, the two scrum Harry halves Miller. here. Old colleagues at Northampton when Mitchell was the number one and Lamani the number two. Well, it's another drop from Stewart. No, didn't get it. Like London buses. Well, it's England <laughs> tries, scored by backs, and yeah. Stewart dropping two catches in just a couple of minutes. Well, the Ireland were, were good, are. Ireland were good last week, even though they took a bit yeah. to get going, but because they didn't kick to him. Yeah, it's like the Antiques Roadshow. Those are two very rare finds. <laughs> Okay, take See what you do on a Sunday night. Left. <laughs> I haven't got a coat. Right I'm going to get soaking. <laughs> Back into Richmond. Hey ho. It may change. The assistant referee on the far side there, Pierre Brousset of France. He's involved in the World Cup. He can't wait to get home looking at the weather here. Good scrum from Fiji again. Lamani. Advantage blue backs on side. Here's Randrandra. Floats it over the top. That's meant for Hambossi, who can shift. And he got around Stewart, didn't he? Here's Randrandra again. Caleb Munts to his side. It's an advantage being played here to the Fijians. The carry forward there from Bill Marta, who was outstanding last week in that defeat in Nantes by France. Now there's some space. But then the pass went Back forward. Backs England off. have come offside. Sorry, Martin, yeah, backs Back offside from there. They'll take that. Fiji. Do they fancy three? Do they fancy going into the corner? Raul Louis. Simon Raul Louis. Rodney Parade. Newport was his Sorry. preferred home when he was overplaying, and he's done a great job. And I think he can be very proud of what he's achieved so far with Bring Fiji and going to achieve. I think the Dura playing in the Super Rugby Pacific is, is bearing fruit. Um, and it can only mean good things because we know how potent these island people are in, you know, with Fiji, Tonga, Samoa and how important they are to the rest of the world's rugby teams and it's nice to see they'll be strong and not lose so much talent abroad. Yes, the Drew got through to the quarter-finals where in the end they were put to the sword by the Crusaders in Christchurch but on the way there they beat the Crusaders at home. They also won against the Reds from Brisbane, the Hurricanes, the Rebels, and more. There's Caleb Munts. Terrific kick from fully 45 metres. Fiji on the board. And despite what well, I think it's fair to say has been a fairly one-sided affair thus far, Fiji do just trail by five and we're almost through the opening quarter of the match because it's because of England's kicking and actually retaining that retaining the ball back so yeah they're not going to break they're going to change at England are going to force Fiji's hand a bit but again this is where their experience has inside. got better playing the 15-man game they're all it's together so you know they're not going to run from their own 22 they're going to play the territory game as well and use that catch it carry there from Viliama Mata there's Lamani pretty steward Getting a bit of protection from both Malins and Mitchell. There's Mitchell. On to Courtney Laws. Laws now 34. Been to Release. World Cups and British and Irish Lions tours. Use a nine. Of course, when Laws made his debut, it was in the second row. Matter again underneath it. Back of blue. It was palmed back well by Malins. Another kick that's been uh, taken by England again, but they've lost it. <laughs> Mata doing the mopping up. Here's Lamani. Tries to find some space. Ball skids across the turf at Twickenham. Not the best director kick. Hold the up. Fast, hold on. 
is Ford again. I think he's looking for one of those spiral bombs here. It's not got the spiral Part on it that one. time. The man is underneath it. Did well. Then looked for some space, really, where there wasn't much. And they'll take that, England, again. They're kicking for a result. They're kicking, actually, not aimlessly. They're chasing hard. That time, the Marnie, the scrum-off, took it back. He tried to get the blind side. Stewart puts him in, so it's a game. That's when the kicking game works. The rain has stopped. We've got a nice film over, over the top of Twickenham. Beautiful pitch. Nine back. So here's Theo Dan, earning his third cap today. Blue down. Isolated, no problem. Leave Bit of work there from Tangi Tangi Valu. Blue was down, no collapse. Use it! Johnny May, the try scorer, plays scrum half. Now they do have Mitchell back there and on his feet. Not his best kick. And with Commander underneath it. That was a gift, really. There was no distance in there. You need to get it for about four seconds. Quarter of the match gone. England leading by eight points to three. The difference between the sides, a try from Johnny May. It's Stuart. Well, forward. Well, the referee says it's a knock-on. Play on, talented, knock-on. The word on. then appeals for a high tackle, Play which Yaku Paper has said play on to. Oh, that's a horrible pass. Caleb Munt's going back. They had a free play out there. Two Alangi. <laughs> Big grin. The two Alangi grins there. He's not going to get away with that one. I didn't see any foul play because you fell into it. It's very, I gotta say, England are doing a tremendous job protecting the catcher on these as they go back. They're almost, which is legal as long as you don't get in front. Sorry, as long as you don't change your direction. Um, as the chaser is coming up, you can do it, but they're actually, the guys are just walking back. Nice forming a nice blue shield in front of the kicker, and that, fortunately, that time didn't quite work for Stewart. Knocked it forward, so this is why we've got a slight he, stoppage. He did get a shot, but he fell into it, so it's not foul play. But he did get a shot. Well, the Thank England you. head coach said okay. before kickoff, we're going to have to be good today to win. Well, they have the lead. What does your uh, report card <laughs> say at the moment, Dewey? Look, they're not going to change the way they play overnight. They kick far too much away, but that's his philosophy. A thousand metres a game, more pressure, more, more wins. Yeah, 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 we know. The trouble is that breaks down when actually we don't follow those rules and we don't compete in the air as we did last week really in Dublin we didn't quite know or in Gatlin it is so yeah it's 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 one of those things that it's been proven it works but actually we need the plan a we need a connection with the other game you know we're not seeing that so hopefully we'll start a little bit here this is Jenko yeah yeah they're all there aren't they they're on the Alex King, you can see on the right. They're on a, a night out in Richmond. There you go, they'll be in the sun later, I'm sure. Bear in mind, Wales' first game at the World Cup in Pool C, up against Fiji, Bordeaux. That's why they're here. Yeah. There you go. 15 days' time. <laughs> Blue, number one. Penalty going against Ellis Genge. Hinge. Number don't one don't worry about the scrum, they're getting penalties off it now. Well, despite the fast start by England, you get a sense now that Fiji have found their feet. Well, again, in the Drua, the regular guys, they play week in, week out, that's the penalty for Gens going down. You could say it was the Fijian prop, you know, whatever, but the touch judges had a word with Yucca Paper. And now it's Matavesi's chance to get this ball in. It's a drying going on. That game against Wales, number 2007, when Fiji beat, beat Wales then. Still had nightmares about that, they do, the, the Welsh fans. Well, that was from Matavesi over to Mata. This looking encouraging, Lamani feeding the ball on. That's Matavesi again, change of direction. That was Tangi Tangi Valu. Lamani. Here goes Randra. 
just bouncing off George Ford. Oh, and then losing it forward in the contact, and it's Mitchell, and there's nobody back. Good clearance from Mitchell, but we've just got Inside. a sense there Inside. of the threat that this big fella here poses. <laughs> he poses more than a threat, he is an absolute handful. A little bit of space, that's a perfect legal charge because he's used his shoulder, George Ford has used the shoulder. There's no problem with that, but he's just bounced off, that's how powerful this man is. How influential he can be. Fire down. Bomber agree. Fiji carried that into the 22 before it was struck. Referee's just blown for some account crisis number 12. Yeah. Well, just whenever Mano Tulangi goes yeah, yeah. down on one yeah, knee and there's treatment, we, we England and the coaching the staff take a deep breath. No, I have someone looking, so don't worry. If we consider that of the original 33 that Steve Borthwick named a fortnight or so ago for the World Cup, for today's game, just 24 of those 33 available. Of course, we've had players lead the squad, like Jack Van Fort lead, and most recently Anthony Watson. We've had replacements drafted in, but it's a measure of the attrition rate the last three weeks has had on Steve Borthwick's planning. And other sides, you've got to say, but they have to go through this process. You can't go to the World Cup not having played games. Yes, certain players can do that. Tom Curry will probably be one of those who is important, incredibly important to England. Whether he could play eight, eight isn't his specialised position, he is a seven, but he could do that. So, you know, all these things you've got to, you've got to juggle, but nothing replicates what these guys go through in, in the warm-ups and, and how their coaches will see him when it really gets going in France. We're hanging on for Tom Curry, but bear in mind, he hasn't played a match since May, and before that, just six games this calendar year, so unless he's able to get himself hitting his straps Ball out, play on. straight out can we expect Tom Curry to be at his absolute best after such a long absence Ball rolled out. there's Ford oh Left Stewart again ball. problems with the hands out from two Alangan here's Lawrence just tries to slide it through but it goes into the hands of the Fiji fullback throw a CC Is Albert Tuasui being forced back? That was a big hit. Now they're from Matabesi to Randrandra, the floated pass. Oh, the super carry. Come on! They really are brilliant athletes. We've seen that, of course, in the Sevens game. Blue offside. BG, the first Olympic champions in 2016. That time it was. Luke Tangi, Tangi, who'll be playing his league rugby for Bayonne in the top 14 Play next in. season. There's Nitha Lebu. No advantage. Offside. England coming yep. offside. Johnny May looks like he's uh, has he picked up a shoulder there. Offside. Bit of a stinger. So quick. Got a physios over there as well, so he will, <laughs> will not want to go off. World Cup chances has, has been rekindled, but again, this is where they're so dangerous and a bouncing ball can mean a lot of that but look big hit going straight in there some of those England forwards going a big hit on Fiji this time it's uh, number seven Tangi Tangi the loop straight in keep those legs pumping you can get people with you then and it's quick ball they retain good ball there Fiji good facet to play so well, Johnny May who would appear to be the replacement for Anthony Watson okay. Watson's replacement has not been formally named but Daly's got an injury. Yes, Elliot Daly. Real concerns about him as well. Maybe, maybe Mr. Slade will have to get his boots back on. Well, that ball clearly a bit like uh, a bar of the old Lux soap. There goes Tangi. Lamani. Another great carry from Tanga Tangi Valo, but then. It's snapped up by the England captain who can't keep hold of it. Soap on a rope, I think you. You could call this. Make, make it for an exciting game. Randrandra getting caught. The ball squeezing forward again. It's with Leo Dan. Referee playing a knock on advantage in favour of England. Mitchell. There's Frank Lamani. Plenty of time to 
pick his spot. Hold on. Straight down the throat of Malins. Here's George Ford. Hold on. Five against three handling errors. Five to England, three to Fiji, and we've got a bit of kick tennis. And we throw a CC that Hold time. On, now, I think this may well be the spiral bomb. Run it is indeed. Now, this ball will just dive. Oh, and it's gone straight through the hands of Randrandra. Gathered by the captain there, Naitha Lebu. Well, I must say, it's just a comedy of errors at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my word. It is remarkable what a bit of rain does to... 30 highly remunerated, I say 30 highly remunerated, I think 15 of them are highly remunerated. Not sure necessarily about the fortunes of the Fiji players, but amazing what a bit of rain does to... And obviously they've got, they have yeah. got sticky stuff to do, and whether they've been sprayed, they may not have thought the rain would have come that early, I think it was forecast about five. Simon Raloui and the, the background staff look on. Daryl Gibson there, front right, former All Black. Yeah, they've got a lot of, like I said, they're, they're funded well. Dan Cole is down there with a shoulder injury. Seems to be the vogue at, that at the moment, but um, interesting, Mark Evans, the, the guru from Harlequin Saracens, he's out there in, in a sort of helping aspect as well, getting funding, and that's the big thing that the island of Fiji, and I would say Tonga and Samoa, exactly the same, is actually getting some money to actually develop these, you know, a 15-man side that can play in a league that so they're not constantly going abroad. It's about time it happened, isn't it? Oh, I've been crying out, loads of people have going crying out for World Rugby for many, many years to help, to help, to help. And they've all said, yeah, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it. Actually, something is happening there, and you can see the benefit. You know, it's 8-3, all right, we've had a bit of bad weather, but it's bad weather for both sides. Half an hour gone, you know, the, the results will show it. The, you know, the Pacific Cup, they were outstanding, big and Tonga and Tamar, you know, on their journey to, to the World Cup, but went to not fancy playing less because I heard a little little rumour that yes there will be targeting obviously the Welsh team. Bit of focus there on Daryl Gibson who played a bit of league rugby here in England for Leicester. Don't over it. Let's go. Coach! Part of that great Crusader side of the 1990s. The delicious, the delicious blind side here. Fumani wants to put months away. Some big guys outside him. That's a good scrum. They need to get it out now. Use it. Missing out Caleb Munts on there to run Randra. Had to bend his back for that. And he's taken down by Tua Lange. Eight to nine metres inside the England half. The counter up there. There's Albert Tuasui who takes it forward. Now playing his club rugby for Gloucester. That was Nitha Leibu. He did well to keep that alive, did Fiji. Well, that's a powerful carry. That time it was Tariki de Veta. It was Lamani. All good. Tangi Tangi Balu, who has made some eye catching contributions today. Caleb Munts. Molly Lawrence just wrapping him up. Away! No hands! No hands, six! A lot of faith being put in Caleb Munts. They, well done. He started all the test matches so far this year for Fiji. Quite clear he's preferred to the two 32 year olds, one of whom is on the bench here, Titi Teller. The ninth phase, and sprinting through there is Rebel Thamanda. Thamanda onto his captain, and Fiji through Waisia. Nathan Lebu have conjured a little bit of brilliance. Wow. Again, we were complaining about the rain, complaining about the knock-ons, and uh, all of a sudden, from almost nowhere, what it was very good, though, it's phase eight, was it phase nine, Martin? But they just, again, kept their, kept their shape, and that's two little steps. That shouldn't happen, okay. really, with a good drift defence. I think, hold on a second, as Nayeth Leva goes over there. You want to show me the last pass? Yaka Paper is looking at the last pass. Yes, Yaka, I just want to show you the uh, last pass. Okay. Yes, Brian McNeese is the voice you heard there, the television match official. First and it's this pass from Rather Thuanda to Naitha Lebu. Ooh. Okay, it goes all out of the hands, doesn't it? He 
you just watch where the hands are. Yeah. Just watch the hands. Yeah, if so he's not pulled it back, it's got this gone forward, so forward, forward, it has to be a forward. Unfortunately, that's, cr that's uh, crossed off. But coming back to it, you see how dangerous they are. They thought that England had set their defence two steps. He's behind, and all of a sudden, we know the pace and the power. Not happy. He's probably saying I could have done it and gone myself now. I know it's a bit of a hackneyed line that almost every sport has their favourite second team, and even for England fans, I think that uh, Fiji filled that function. So it's almost, I think, with mixed feelings for many people here at Twickenham that that's now been uh, rubbed off. Two steps, beautiful steps. Rabathamonda. There wasn't any complaints for England there. Really, but again, forward passes forward, so it's been given. TMO requested Yaka Paper to look at it. He has, and it's just it's just where the wrist and the hands, the fingers was just pointing forward. This is good from Fiji. Well, a little bit of individual brilliance. No one's fault. And that uh, England defence was cut to ribbons. Absolutely. And that's what Fiji can do, and I'd be very concerned if I'm uh, England's forward coach now because. If these nations, two T nations, get something right, as in the set piece, you know, you do then put, put pressure on these big sides. And at the moment, you're going to say Fiji are enjoying this. It used to be one of their big weaknesses. They had nowhere to hide. When the power came on, the referee always had one eye. Oh, well, it's going to be the weaker side. This has been a good set from Fiji. Well, we've seen Warren Gatland. He's uh, acutely aware that Fiji, world ranked ninth, that's actually one place ahead of Wales. Ball out. Ford. Fine kick. That was a beauty. Again, relief pressure. The game isn't all about headless running and maverick plays. Sometimes you've got to be pragmatic. You have to be pragmatic. That was great. Russia now on Matavesi. Good work in the scrum from VG. Can they match it with a line out? So I think that was a rumble of thunder. The clouds are gathering again. Here goes Matavesi. Oh, what a step. Great offload. Hambosi. Now here is Ramrandra. Just dumps down Maylins, his old teammate from his Bristol days. Well, Fiji are starting to enjoy themselves. It's becoming far too easy. Matavesi there, just like just stepping up one person, and then they just come online. They just offload. It's very simple but very effective. That was Nasilla Silla. There goes Matavesi again. Well, which side are playing all the rugby now? They're wearing white. It's definitely not England. Fiji now 56%. As soon as they get some ball, you can see how dangerous they are. Asking questions, they keep it tight. They don't panic. Here's Bill Mutter. So much experience and wisdom inside that eight jersey. That's Sariki Devetta. Another good carry. Here's Lamani. That time to Tangi. They keep knocking on the door, don't they? Very comfortable left to right, left to right, potted up. When will they pull the trigger? There goes Bill Matter again. It's lost forward in the contact. Well, to that point, they've been really patient. And there is the clearance, but they will have the line out, Fiji. Sam Matavesi, who, uh, well, he used to be in the Royal Navy before professional rugby came calling, and uh, he had a special Don't visit know. this week from his old uh, naval mates, the Rear Admiral, Steve Morehouse, on. bestowed on the hook of the, the, the ambassadorial role of local acting leading hand. Had a special little ceremony. Well, Max Malin's got sat down there, and he's not the first, and he won't be the last. Courtney yeah. Law's a little bit more treatment, but again, you can see how physical this side is. Theo Dan's uh, been, I think, in 
using a football parlance, nutmeg there by his opposite number, Matavesi. Super no. skill, but again, it's just riding a tackle, getting through, getting your arms up, popping that ball to the next supporting runner. And equally, the same, the same, the same. It's just breaching that down first off, getting through that defensive wall, and then oh, we know how much pace they've got, we know how much skill they've got. And this is with a greasy ball. Well, there are a couple of uh, Northampton mates there, Alex Mitchell, Sam Matavesi. We're just waiting for this player. They spend 40-odd uh, weeks a year in one another's company up there at Franklin's Gardens. An hour and a half or so north of London. There's another Saint. Looking a little bit uncomfortable at the moment, Courtney Laws. And he's a player who's had his injury and his concussion, concussion issues. Absolutely. In well, recent he's times. He's at the cold face all the time. I think he probably... Oh, dear, that's a shock. Probably prefers playing in the back row. He doesn't have to sort of bend his back too much. Just with no up. arms. No Roni Marwi's no uh, tackle there has been passed on to the television match official. It's a penalty. It was a no arms tackle, I think. Number one. That's terribly dangerous. Yeah, Aroni Marwi, the Saracen. Look at that. Oh, yeah. You've got a wrap. Basically, you can't go in. You could, well, he missed him totally. What's happened is he's gone. Genja's actually jumped into the tackle. You're not allowed to do that from, from one point. So he's actually jumped over the guy. So it looked really bad, but actually he had tried to grasp him, but he's totally missed. That's my interpretation of it, anyway. England and Fiji. These two sides actually met in the first match of the World Cup here back in 2015 when... Uh, the up. irony, the referee Yaku Paper. Dan. Finding his captain. The last four minutes of the half. Last 20 minutes of which I think has been uh, dominated largely by the men in white. Arm is out from Yaku Paper. Right, England, free play now. Yeah, it's obviously kind of rocking on hands. May. There's Stewart, just stepping inside, Ambossi. <laughs> Ollie Chesham. Now good to see Chesham back when you consider five months ago he broke and dislocated his ankle. Many people thought that his chance of playing the World Cup had gone, but now he is going to be a linchpin for England. I like hands. it, Chesham. He showed a bit of dog, actually, in Ireland when a lot of people weren't showing Number anything one. at all when he came on. He obviously got George Martin who's injured, they like him as well, so there's a lot of talent coming through. It's just using that talent to the right bits. Number one from the side. They fancy a seven-pointer here, Steve Borthwick, and why not? Four minutes, three minutes to go into the corner, do exactly what gave them that penalty in the first place. Catch and drive, still a massive part of England's game, still a massive part of anybody's game, if you do it correctly. The best field position England have had for quite a while, this. Six. Yeah, possessions 42 for England, 58 for Fiji. You can Funny. see them come back into this game. They would be ahead, apart from that try being disallowed for a forward pass. So, correctly so, I would have to say. Here we go. Remember, England have never lost to Fiji. There's the Dan. At the tail of that driving ball, it's well orchestrated at the moment. Meter by meter. Now with Ellis Genge. Penalty advantage. Alex Mitchell just eyeing up for a moment the blind side. He wanted it there, did the England scrum half. Another one, number one. Another penalty. That's a third one against the Roni Maui in a couple of minutes. Ford. Now the space. May. Maylin search for the line. Can he get there? Oh, I say. Number one. Covered events, just saved the day. Everyone was aquaplaning then. Malins was, was going in on his tummy. Is he going Papers to his pocket? His pocket. <laughs> he, he is. is on the go line, number one. Well, I did say number it's one. a third penalty in about five minutes, Aroni Marwi has conceded. He's been called for. The yellow card is out. Four and he pulls that down. This is getting where you build pressure. 
you know, you go to one of your strengths, it's the right thing to do. You're in that left hand corner, and I'm absolutely sure they'll go again to the line out. You've got a couple of minutes, even if it had gone into the red, you'd still have time to go to the line out. And this is, you think, straight away, May off one wing, give us the mail into the other. That's fine, you ain't getting in there, kid. That's perfectly legal. They're trying to get their arms up around him, everyone's aquaplaning. They're off the pitch Are now, England. Ready? A great way to finish the half, which has been pretty good. They haven't had it all their own way. Fiji has shown exactly how dangerous, how you know how together they are. They're not run, run, running sevens all over the place. They're very pragmatic in in their sort of version of how they want to go forward and play. So here we go. Come on. Catch from Chesham. The sound effects from the 50,000. Theo Dan surging towards the line. Only blue players on the floor. Well, they've been working on their ruck and maul defence. At Fiji. Oh, I say. Only blue players on the floor. No players to get down. And that's what it means to them. You can see actually the intelligence there. And remember, the captain just gone round. You're allowed to do that. And he just flopped on, said, I can't get out of the way. England can't get that ball to the back of their rack for Mitchell to use. Hence, it's a turnover time for Fiji. They've just lost themselves, I would say, a five pointer, possible seven pointer. Been a little bit clueless there, England. You should have controlled that a bit more. Okay. Is it seven? And they know it. Then Earl knows that. For the strum. Well, there has to be uh, a bit of a reorganisation here, and it's going to be uh, Lakima Tangi Tangi Balu, who is told to go into the changing room. He's got a bit of a head start, so he can put the kettle on. And on comes uh, Johnny Koroi Dua Dua. Blue players on the floor, they know that. Koroi Dua Dua is going to do one job: bend his back, keep straight. Scrum half, puts the ball in, squint, gets the number eight, kick it out, and then they survive. Mind you, you've got 30 seconds, they've stopped the clock. Okay. Eight minutes in the sim bin to go. Well, the clock is back on, so by the time the front rows of locked horns and Frank Lamani's put it in, time will be out with a flash of lightning. Over Twickenham. Nine. A rumble of thunder. Mad guys. Okay, we'll do it again. Well, the we forecast have... has been accurate. <laughs> Half time. You're very happy with your app, aren't you? Half time, it told us. Well, now they, they can put this ball in, squint, get it to the eight, kick it off, and get in the in the sheds. Yeah. Oh my word, this. It's not nice. And all the time, that clock on the yellow card is going down. Crouch. Boyne. Set. Here's Lamani into touch. Yaku Paper blows his whistle for half time. Johnny May ended the England three quarters dro try drought. Six hours of play since uh, England, or well, their backs, last scored a try. That was here against France in the Six Nations. And that is the difference between the sides. England leading Fiji by eight points to three. Yaku Paper blows his whistle. The last 40 minutes of preparation ahead of the World Cup. Back of blue. And again, a far from inspiring start there for England. That's sloppy, really, because again, <laughs> you can take it. You know where Fiji have set up to go. Lawns, Laws didn't really want to bend his back there. Well, he's done that a few times. I think his best, I know you said you'd like him in the, in the, in the back row, he'll play there, but okay. I think his best position is at second row, personally, but uh, with the things that are happening with red cards at the moment, and people unavailable and injured, that's what has to happen. 
Well, there was Sammy Randrandra who met the line-out ball. Remember, Fiji down to 14 for a little more than six Please. further minutes. Roni Mawi, the Saracens loose head, and, well, the Fijians not protecting the ball well, but Ben Earl just giving it away there with a pretty hapless fly hack, in all honesty. Well, he had time to just dive on it. Here's Matavesi. Northampton Saint bringing down Northampton Saint there with Alex Mitchell. Tangles made. Again, the ball being lost in the contact. Play on. The rain is coming down at the moment, not particularly hard. That did uh, catch a Fijian finger. Here comes Drew CC. Drew CC fires it down the tram lines, and well, Freddie Stewart got himself into a terrible pickle there and then it's directly into oh, touch and me ready Stewart is not having his best afternoon well he's dropped two in the first half which is something we've never seen we've never seen him drop one Borthwick penny for your thoughts maybe I don't know he's never seen him probably play like that and he's just uh, missed the a fairly What's innocuous kick to him which went behind and then he's actually put the ball out on the full which is a full house isn't it Five plus. So, Fiji almost 50% of the way through the Simbin period, and that didn't uh, work, but somehow the ball still ends up in the possession of the Fijians. Here goes Randranda again, floated pass out to Ravuthamanda. Ravuthamanda showing Johnny May a clean pair of heels, and then the offload, and with 14 men on the pitch for the second time this afternoon, the captain, Waisea Naithalevu, crosses the try line. But on this occasion, I think it's Thank entirely you, legitimate. Wow, well, there's a few people that haven't come back from the toilet. There's a few people that haven't come back, back from the bars. They need to see this again, this try. Again, it's something out of nothing. It's a big flip chart. Rarandra pops that ball over there to uh, Ravathamanda, who actually let Johnny May in for his score in the first half. And that's just a simple ball. England have come out in the second half and haven't turned on. That's a great score. From Mayathalevu, but again, it's innocuous okay. as May just pushed off this lad. This lad has just done the same. And to Johnny May, it's it's just the uh, it's as if they've come out half asleep. You know, they weren't ready for the first kick off. You know, Laws didn't bend his back, and they've got to put you know a throw in. Fiji have just gone through the process, pop the ball out to the wing, and they get a try. Well, on too many occasions in 2023 this England defence has been porous and it's been exploited by 14 man Fiji and now the Pacific Islanders have a two-point lead another bolt of lightning and it is as if a message is being sent down to one side or the other it's one of inspiration for the Fijians, who after a sloppy start to this match, have dominated. Here's Bill Mata. And he was enormous in that first half. Eight carries, 52 metres. Throw a Sessi with a kick. That wasn't a good one. Straight there to George Ford. Ford. Oh, and just getting the wrong bounce. Randrandra tease him and then touch it down. Absolute correct thing to do. Skid the ball off the park. Unfortunately, went the wrong side the of the flag. The flag doesn't matter anymore. The flag doesn't matter. The flag has gone in. very, very quiet. <laughs> two minutes on the sim bin, two and a half or so. They have to sort this defence out, because, again, it's unacceptable. He go into a massive tournament in France in a week or two up against Argentina, who will be licking their lips with all the reds and on the yellow cards and everything that's going on this afternoon. Well, I think it's fair to say that Rabbit Amanda, who missed that tackle, what should have been a fairly straightforward tackle for a wing on Johnny May, which <laughs> led to the try, and now CG have got a penalty. Well, Rabbit Amanda, one way or another, has well and truly well, atoned. Oh, without a doubt, he'll be, he'll be really peeved with... He went far too high, and you know, Johnny May used him actually as a bit of a springboard. Like he could get, gun, he, he he's a, a powerful guy, he's not all speed. Um, he just got it wrong, but he's, he can also say Johnny May got it wrong on him.
Well, we're busy counting down the yellow card period, but um, it's almost of academic interest because during this yellow card period, DG lead, and they've dealt with it very comfortably indeed. This is where England do not want to uh, no, get down, caught up. It's giving too many penalties away because, again, you lose control of, of the no, game. BG, I think, it's going to be very, very direct. Coming short, coming short. Well, that went That's straight through on. the hands. Referee uh, says there was a knock-on there. The first one. Yes, it was the pass to Luke Tungy. It wasn't really England, England pressurising him. It's just bad handling. Handling errors will be... Russia, what we're up to eight six now, eight for England, six for Fiji. Uh, it's those little tip left. passes that again cause problems for defences. Under a minute, less than a minute. Fiji have had a very encouraging run into this test match. They dominated. Their first three matches, Good. beating Tonga at home by 36 points to 20. They then went to Fine. Samoa, won that by 33 points to 19. And then, most impressively of all, went to Tokyo and put 35 points on Japan. It was a reality check in Nantes last week, but still they were very competitive. Not on the ball. No, it's too late, it's a rock. Too late, it's right. Penalty conceded that time. Not the they first did well man. against France. If Makalu hadn't intercepted that ball, it would have been even closer. Yes, that was an unfortunate moment. Moment mm. for Frank Lamani. So, what do we make of Alex Mitchell? Getting a chance today. Again, no, no different to when he pulls a Saint shirt on. He's all busy and he gets the ball away and whatever. And I think on that occasion he could have probably yeah, milked that, kept that ball in the scrum and, and clapped it and got a penalty. As it is, yeah, yeah he just adds point, something though, different. You know, the scrum halves are told to kick. There is going to have to be a massive part of the, that. Is going to be a massive part of your game if you pull on that England number nine shirt. But it's all the nuts and bolts around it. Don't be afraid to have a go. Well, the end of the Simbin period. Alteration made at scrum half with Frank Lamani coming off and being replaced by Kuraboli. Well, this is better for England. 15 against 15, though. There's Mano Tualangi. There's Mitchell. Here's Maru Itoji. That was good from the Saracens lock. There goes Genj. The tackle from Naitha Levu. Here's Mitchell. Mitchell on to Stewart. Drop the contact. England threatening. It's been quite a while since they did. There's Genj. On to Willis. And they played brightly right at the start of the game, didn't they? And they're replicating that in the second half. That time it's the captain. Away! No way through at the moment, there's Dan Cole. Good tackle, ball's available. Theo Dan, look at the work there being performed by Tangi Tangi Balu. Mitchell, Ford. Well, you have to say that was a fantastic defensive set there from the Fijians. And now they get the penalty. That's what they're good at. That's what they're. That's why they've improved so so it's much. That's why they back. beat sides constantly. They don't go out of shape. Whereas before, after 60 minutes, you know they'd have been smashed in the scrums. Their lineup wouldn't have been great, and their fitness wouldn't have been great. Now, because they play abroad in England and, and well, France, right and also they've got that program back home with Adrura, they are tipped off. Basically, <laughs> they'll absorb this. They know they have to work harder without the ball than the ball. And, you know, they're okay. in the game, they're winning the game. Half an hour to go, this place is like a morgue at the moment. So, the blonde rinse, the Mohican, Joe Marler, and he replaces Ellis Genge. Joe Marler, always a bit of a popular man with the crowd. 
He's giving high fives all the way in outside the ground from the team bus. So he got to the tunnel. Remember, if you come forward, I can come forward. And the thing about this Fiji squad, it's not just 23 men here. Think of the players they're not even selecting today. The likes of Joshua Tuasova, Levani Bottia, Bottia, a top 14 winner, a European champion with La Rochelle. There are more as well. Well, he's one of the outstanding rugby players in the world, Bottia. You know, they just left out the Racing 92 fly-off, Ben, you know, Bola Bola. So they're, they're backing their truer players as well, the guys that play in Fiji, in the, you know, the, in the Super Rugby. And Joe Marla just uh, doesn't give... It can be a walking yellow card on time, so now this is where England need to be crystal clear of what they're trying to do and actually do not give away pens. That middle, that middle. Plenty of time. Billy Armamata is fully restored. It's interesting to... Here from the Fijian captain, Wasir Naifalevu, earlier this week when he spoke again about playing Fiji's freestyle form of rugby, but with a little smile saying that we're also going to be playing structured stuff. But there's the, uh, the arm up, and that's always rather concerning. Just one of those symptoms typical with a nasty blow to the head. We'll make sure. It's Albert Tuisui who is moving, which is good to see. Again, it was a, a well-worked move this time over the top, using the, the, the set up the line as a decoy. Tuisui with a big... He ran into two people. I know Joe Marler, you can't really miss Joe Marler, so it's Earls and Marler. Well, I did hear Yaku Paper suggesting to the television match official that he should take a look at that now bear in mind brian mcneese was here a couple of weeks ago and he was the television match official who alerted the referee that day to the Farrell collision involving josh basham i don't think there's anything in that personally from the first brian. look and the second look All right, do you, want, do you want us to have a look at that? He's now asking, I'm sure you can hear this at home, okay. so I'll, I'll keep quiet. OK. Full spread. Yes, as I've seen live. There's no angle that shows clear head contact. So my initial judgment when it happened, I said he's on the ball. So no, no, we can't find fine foul play, it's your scrum. There's nothing clear. If, if something clear comes up, we'll definitely deal with it. There you go. Red Randra, the captain, is asking there was a head contact. Uh, the referee and the team have, have uh, Your strum, been chatting. We've, and they... we've had a look. There's nothing clear that shows head contact, so we're playing through. Thank you. Well, just for a moment, there would have been a sharp the, intake the of breath. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go, boys. Okay, oh, a fortnight ago. Billy Bunapola last week. Ah, that's where they've been hiding. Out of prying eyes, we found him. Here we go. Billy Bunapola on the left. Right, let's play. It. Owen Farrell on the right. Right on cue. George Martin, you can see there, just crossing his arms. He among the unavailable players because of injury. Elliot Daly, Henry Arundel, Carl Sinclair. Real concerns about Carl Sinclair. Tom Curry has yet to recover from that ankle injury. All unavailable because of injury at the moment. And there goes Kurovoli out there to the fullback, throw a CC. Oh, he's off and running, and look at Fiji here! Ambosi! I wonder, could we be watching a little bit of rugby history emerging here? The coach at the moment unmoved, but once again, the defence just falling off. I'm, I'm lost for words in a sense that England okay, normally on. so, so good. They're falling. And Bossi is lightning, as we know, but most of these Fijian guys, and especially if you've got a, a number 11, 14 on your back, they just make something out of nothing. Yeah. There's nobody on the guard. Ben Earl is looking to the right-hand side. Look where the ball is. 
This guy doesn't need a second chance. Schools tries for fun. And this place you thought was quiet. Unbelievable, apart from a little pocket of Fijian supporters that have gone mad. And rightly so. England have come out in the second half and as if, well, it's going to happen. Well, you know, there's only Fiji, they're going to fall away. They still England got plenty of time to come back into this game. I want to see a reaction now. I really, really do. And Caleb Monks adds the two. And now there's a little bit of daylight. Bear in mind that Fiji have never got within 21 points of England at Twickenham. They now lead by nine. We've got a little more than 26 minutes to go. Well, I said these are the new flying Fijians, and they certainly are right. Come on, England. You're in danger now. Big star, what are you going to do? How are you going to get yourself out of this mess? The replacement scrum half there, Kuravoli. Oh, and yet more promise ring. That was well picked up, well recovered from Johnny May. On the ball. No head contact, no neck contact. England now have Marcus Smith on. Here he is. A little grubber through, but that's well covered. Throw a CSE, the fullback. No. Well, the Fijians have got through to the quarterfinals of the World Cup on two previous occasions, but in terms of single test match victories, this would dwarf anything in their rugby history. Players within the Fiji squad said that half the country will be watching this. I think the whole country will be watching this. And I'm sure the message has got around. Oh, and that's put down by Johnny May, and then... Well, an advantage being played. That was Courtney Laws getting himself in the wrong spot. Advantage is over. Referee says the advantage is over. It was only a knock on. On there to Asilla Silla. No, you're over the top. <laughs> Penalty to Fiji. They'll take you've got three. Scoop over the top. You've got players in this. And this is where England are stupid now. They can't stop themselves going in this, this the cookie jar. Let Fiji have it. Get your lines of defence correct and stop giving away penalties. He holds his hands up, this is three points, the way this lad's kicking. That's 20 points to eight. Yeah, shot. Freddie Stewart replaced by Marcus Smith. There are a lot of long faces wearing England jerseys. Remember, England have never lost to a so-called Tier 2 nation. That in itself is quite a patronising term. Fiji are anything but. They produce outstanding individuals and now are putting together one of the world's best teams. That lead increases. Okay. It's now 12 points, and that is the suspended England captain. Simon Rao Louis, the, the head of coaching, head of direct, whatever you want to call him, said, we've had a pretty good week, we've had a great week, we've enjoyed ourselves. They came for the captain's run down here, they were playing football, laughing, joking, but actually the serious side of it, they've just put 20 points on England to eight. So now, England, where are you, where's your go-to players? Where are your players of quality, of calibre that can change us around? Oh, and a basic error there from Fiji. Out there from Mitchell to Marla, who drives the ball forward. Well, the headlines in the London newspapers is popped over the top. That's one to deal with, and Marcus Smith is in there! And England have bounced straight back. Although the referee is checking something. Can you just give that players on the side of kick? They are checking for offside, but Marcus yeah. Smith's involvement almost immediate. 
Oh, he's in front. Yeah. I think he's in front. You can't see from that angle. Clearly, that's a grounding. There's no problem with that. But actually, I'm sure... OK, Yaka, we're going to freeze this on the kick. OK. So that's level. That's level for me. Okay. He's, he's not clearly in front. Not clearly in front. George Ford adds the two points. England back in business. And again, the old problem for Egypt, just that little bit of concentration from that restart. This comes from that restart where they dropped. Marcus Smith, again, I was asking for the guys to stand up, the world-class guys, the guys that make a difference. Lee does in a Harlequin short, in a shirt, more times than not. This time he's done it for England, got back in the game. Well, the word from the England camp was that Marcus Smith could be brought off the bench to... Oh, and now there's some space, and it's Alex Mitchell, he's on his own, though. Steps inside one Fijian, but then he's knocked down. Oh, and Chesham has spilled it. Advantage here to Fiji, and this is where they thrive! And look at this! Well, that was a try-saving tackle on the captain, Johnny May, saving the day. Naitha Lebu thought he was crossing for a second, or at least he had a chance. Well, brilliant from Mitchell initially, scaring up this left-hand side, but again, bot the ball dropped from Chisholm, and you cannot take your eye off it because they will go. On Thank another you. day, you think this guy's going in, Johnny May does time this superbly well. Puts the captain, not the captain, sorry, Nath, it is the captain, <laughs> and Nath oh, Lebu into, into touch. But again, end-to-end -end stuff, this is exciting. Not so much probably if you're an England fan at the moment, but um, they want their side ahead. But it's going from end-to-end. That's -end. all, please. There's, there's a mark. Well, I was saying that the word from the England camp is that it. Marcus Smith could come off the bench in some sort of back three hybrid role. Do you wonder whether that was creative thinking or flight of fancy, but in fairness, it is at the moment keeping England in this game. They're still stay five there, behind. Stay there, stay there. Approaching the hour mark. The weather has certainly improved. Rabotaman. Open space for the Fijians. A high tackle there from England. So there's a penalty coming. That was on to Tangi. Big heavily, thank you. Bounced off the shoulder. There's the fullback. Throw a sissy. Just high tackle. We'll take three here again. No need for it, really. Actually, it's a seat belt, there's nothing dangerous on it, it's just one of those reflective or instinctive tackles, he's, he's grabbed him. And for that, it will be a pen, obviously, it's and a penalty. again, the way this lad is kicking. It's a high tackle, you get your penalty. It's a lack of danger. We're judging by some of the crowd reaction, Dowie. Here we go. There are some new Fiji fans in the house. <laughs> There's the England defence coach. Here's your mark. Big figure in rugby league before he made the switch, Kevin Sinfield. Great Britain rugby league international. Cut his teeth no on the union game, working no at Leicester. No well, he's at a... That's the first high tackle. An interesting yeah. debut as an international coach, isn't he? England's defence hasn't been that good. Their defence, their <laughs> discipline in the tackle area, Budapolo Farrell hasn't there. been that good, so something plenty to work on, I think, for Mr Sinfield. Great bloke, though. He's got a big job to sort it out because, again, it's no need for it. I mean, it's instinctive, but all of a sudden, what have you done? You've got a great try, you've got back in the game, the crowd are uh, a little bit up, 20, last 20, last quarter of the game coming, and now you just give a pen away. Like I said, the way this boy is striking it, this isn't a give me, but we were just about to find out. They live months. Well, that right foot is working rather well. I told you about the fan converts. It's got a few people in the ground and switched sides. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
British flag on there. Beautiful Fiji. He's looking at the tour there in 18, 88, 89. Fantastic country. Now, Fiji, you've just got to be a little bit more cute on this Sorry. restart. You um, messed the last one up. So, Corey Dua Dua replacing well. the Saracen, Aroni Maui. Seven. Maui played about the first 50 minutes of the Premiership final here for Saracens when they beat Sale. He's uh, played about the same here, hasn't he? Bearing in mind that he spent 10 minutes in the bin. Pemo Maya Mayana Vanua is on. Oh, what a save. That was a fantastic catch from Mata. <laughs> they weren't going to mess that one up. And outside the 22, so he can't kick directly. 18 minutes to go. VG leading by eight. They've never beaten England. Hoisted by Kuraboli. Taken well from Smith. It was rather well taken by Ford as well. Lewis Ludham, you will see as well. He wants to seal his place in the starting 15. Manatua Lange into Nyatha Levu. Ford. Another carry there from Ludlam, getting no change out of the Fiji defence. Smith bars it along the ground. And that is a kick that will pile some pressure on that Fiji line out. You have to say, one way or another, that better has inspired England since he arrived. It's just the way he plays. I think defences, Richard Wigglesworth looks on the skills coach. Um, when you're chasing a game, I look at the pitch out there, right? Who could change this game? Which bit of magic? Well, he can. He's just shown that with that try. You know, it's a well worked try over the top. And this one's over the top. Quick thinking there from Fiji. With the referee just playing an advantage there. Excellent work from Joe Marler. Ford. Well, was that the right choice? He gets a second bite, though. Out there from Mitchell. Here's Merchant. Important tackle Relax. from Throw a Sisi. Courtney Laws wants it. Ford looking for the cross kick. There's a chance here. I think Ben Hull's out there. Oh, he left the ball behind. Yes. Great vision from Ford. But again, the skill set wasn't quite there from Ben Earl. Gotcha. The right thing to do. Everybody's tracking infield. They think the danger from England is going to be the 12. pick and drive. And you've 12. got to say, was it months the 10? The fly half is out there protecting, and he does well. He, he doesn't overdo something silly. He doesn't go in too quickly to catch Bert Earl in the air, which would have been a p penalty. You can see there, obviously, a, a full knock on there. So I'd say, I would say... <laughs> He holds his hand up for Ford, right decision, I made the mistake, but well done, Munz, for just being in that position, seeing it, and actually I think Ford set himself up a, a second before, so that may have given Munz the chance to get back. Six wide coming back. Oh, that's We're quite a call, isn't it? semi run run Six is coming back for the HIE. Going off, Albert Tuasui, who... He's not bad. ...after that... Uh, okay, five. ...bang on the head has gone through the head injury assessment process and been cleared to return. Who's come on then for Rarandra? Another who? Luke in, Luke in! That's the far marks. This is a big scrub, Mr. Marler and the boys. Square, Square sir. Patient. There'll be a bit of weight coming through here. Approach. Trying to disrupt BG ball. Put a volley, the replacement scrum half who started for Fiji in the wins against uh, Samoa and Japan. Gets it away. That's a good exit. That's a good exit from Fiji. 
nothing too complicated. He's doing well, isn't he, Caleb Munts? Hey, he's, he's, just, he's confident in his own skin. He's there. Okay. He's not over flashy. Just does the right thing. Right. Right. You can see why he's yeah, first yeah, pick. Simon no, no, Rawalui no, had the choice of not just Teddy yeah. Teller, but Ben Bola Bola, yeah. who has made the cut. England. Both of those two men, 32 years old. Months the youngster at 23. Yeah, England went to a five-man line to put the power up the middle now. They've done that again. It's the Earl and uh, Tuolangi show. Ball's available. Here's Ford. That's Marchant. Hands off. Marla. He ducked into it. 14 minutes remaining. Marcus Smith. Here's Tuolangi. Tackle there from Caleb Munts. There goes Ludlam. Leave it now, leave it! He'll give you a bit of dog as well. Vonage, too light. Rock form. Ford. Change of direction there, it's an awkward one. The referee will blow his whistle. Too light, rock form. Well, it's a soft penalty. And decisions to be made by England. They trail by eight. Rock form. Do they take the three? Or do they go to the corner? Well, the catching drive has been pretty good for them. I think they've lost one line at not straight. So, if you do the math, I think that's probably the percentage move. You could take three, then you get down to what? Five points. That's a try. A converted try wins you the game. We shouldn't be saying this. I'm sorry, this is not disrespectful to Fiji, but I suppose it is disrespectful. I'll slow it down, but clear. Because um, England are desperate now. We're coming nearly coming in the last ten minutes of the game, and they need to score. Fiji's more defence being tested. There with Theo Dan. There comes Ben Earl. Now starting to head in the right direction for England. So go. And it shades of the last 12 minutes or so of that test match here a couple of weeks ago against Wales. Here's Mitchell on to Smith. No, 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 no. Mitchell again. Out to Ford. This time in the corner. And Joe Marchant, whose presence in this England squad. It's becoming ever more critical, and it certainly is going to be valuable today. They're starting to get back into it, and England may just save their blushes. Well, they needed something to happen, and again, it has come from Smith. When this ball comes up, you can see George Ford saying, no, 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 I don't want it. That's, I'm sorry, the time before he was saying no. Marchant gets in in the corner, using his pace power. A bit of panache at the end with the slap down, but uh, that's what England needed. That's what these fans needed. Hard kick from Ford, but they could do Thank with you. this as well. Ford, as he so often does, straight down the middle. One point game. 11 minutes to go. Fiji just caught out, they just couldn't get across there. March and just right in the right place, he's called for it. The time before, Ford was going, no, 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 I don't want it. Smith said, give it to me, I'll have it. That set up that ruck, and then it was quick ball. St George's flag is uh, fluttering in the breeze, but we've still got 11 minutes to go. Well, the first 70 minutes where England are concerned, it's more about character than quality. And if they do get themselves out of this deep hole... Oh, and it's spilt! And that was Danny Kerr. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, he kicked that ball before he'd caught it. That's exactly what's happened. Normally one of the safest pair of hands. It's amazing what pressure does to you. You look at the scoreboard, he's still one point behind, he's still 11 minutes to go. Plenty of time, and then... Where am I looking? What am I doing? That, he's already caught it. Oh, did catch it and actually just put it down. And was going to fire it into the stand. And 
things aren't going well for you. There is confirmation of those alterations that have been made by Steve Borthwick. Galavetti Revovo standing in the midfield alongside Caleb Munts. Impossible to miss with those fluorescent orange boots. I wonder. He's the first receiver. Look at the power there from Fiji. He's being held up though, is Revovo. Now Fiji will get the ball. There's the ball, there's the ball. On that time to Koridua Dua. Can England just defend without giving a penalty? Hold on, Alec, no more. On the ball. Another metre made. Oh, and then it's spilt. And the ball claimed by David Ribbons. And back here to Ford, deep inside his own in goal area. Doesn't find touch though, just by and throw a CC. Very good defensive set from England. Once again, the power though from the Fijians. That time it's Release. Tawaka. On to Mata. Away. Fiji, can they find a hero? I'm just watching Munts, he might go back for the drop, but at the moment they just want to keep this ball going, there's overlap here. Better minute, it's floated out, and this man has been dangerous all day. Oh, and the pass is freeze, Kurevoli. And once again, that England defence is found wanting. It's just mistake after mistake after mistake it's all they're doing is just swinging their hips England are just biting they're just going and they're not making any defensive this is just a simple ball over the top this guy's already scored but he steps he steps again Dan Cole can't get anyone near him and then he stay on the feet they stay on their feet they want to be alive and all it is is a support running calling for the ball they don't want to die with it but it's not an ultra flamboyant it's not any of these basketball passes with one hand it's just Guy supporting the guy with the ball. Watch what he's doing. I tell you what, I'll watch, I'll watch, I'll watch, and there I score. I think there's a bit of carver being drunk on the islands at the moment. And well, this may well be the biggest kick of young Caleb Munce's life. To give BG an eight-point lead with less than seven minutes to go and he's done it and you said it eight-point lead England have to score twice England have to score twice with six minutes or so to go and that's what he was doing also he was never going to miss that kick he was taking the clock down the kicking clock that is which you can see on the board on the two big screens we've got here, England right at the middle now to get this back. There you go, well played. They've done it. Care. Ford. Malins. On to Earl. Finding himself in the midfield, he's been everywhere. Again as Ben Earl. Ford fires it through. And that's a miscue in all honesty. Goal line dropout. Again, didn't need to do that. You've got six minutes, you've got to chase. I know you're chasing it, it sounds stupid, but yes, What's you are chasing it, but you just kick the ball away. What are Fiji going to do? They're Fun just going to walk Captain. all the way. You've got a free kick now. There'll be a few subs coming on. That'll take Who's another minute. Captain? These are a street wise side. Two, These are a professional outfit to play in the, the Super Rugby. They know what, exactly what they're doing. That clock is not England's friend at the moment. Cavalry are on, done. they'll take their time, and this kick, you want to go downtown big style with Munz, he's been unbelievably controlled in that 10 jersey this afternoon. And now both of the big fellas in the midfield have been replaced, Randrandra, Nitha Levu, the captain, now it's Titi Teller who's on, Ben Earl taking responsibility, makes some good metres there for England. 
That's Will Stewart. Stewart has been involved in all of England's games during this summer series. They're up to the 22. Five minutes to go. Release! Release! Well, surely defeat here at home on the eve of the World Cup would be one of England's lowest points. All good, he jumps. There's Kerr. No foul play. Courtney Laws, his 100th test match for England. It may prove to be one to forget. Important tackle from Rabu Thamanda. Here goes Ribbons. Every tackle matters here for Fiji. The space out wide is Ludlam, who cuts in field. A little more than four minutes to go. Ford. Some huge hits. There goes Walker. Walker back in action for the first time in months. They've turned this. They've turned it. They just absorb England, you're clueless on that occasion. You're not enough people there, you don't want to go individually. They've been showing this all afternoon. You can see the guys on the sideline. Munster's has got the ball in his hand, he'll take his time, they'll pop this up. Three minutes or so, they will walk to this line. You see they individually gone on his own, Ben Earl. That's straight away, the guy's over the top. You are not going to get away with that, you are going to get turned at this Matavesi. Matavesi, with all his knowledge of the Pram, Northampton Saint, has he been a Saint for Fiji? Turns that Number. ball over. Another 30 seconds will go by the time he's cleaned this. Show your numbers. Six. Oh, my word. England have to score twice. Eight points behind. Three minutes and 15 seconds. And Varnish, number 16, oh, is over the 15. They've given another pen. Before the line-out's over. The ball kicked away. The walk back. Tail play is over the 15. Ball caught inside. The pressure comes on, right. England no, alike. At the back of the line-out, the defenders. machine giving penalties out. Offside over 15, and then they've defending started. that ball. <laughs> I can't honestly believe we've got ourselves in this mess but let's for a moment pause and consider what it means to those Fiji fans and in cities like Suva how special has the last 77 minutes been it's one of the well if England are to lose this will be one of the biggest upsets ever in their history I would suggest I'm no great historian but I know for a fact they've never lost to Fiji Fiji are a side that have given so much to world rugby as in Samoa as Tonga do as well there'll be one party one heck of a party over there and they deserve it Matavesi finds his man in the line out Every one of these 23, in fact the 33, Fiji's World Cup squad. It has been an heroic performance. The greatest in the history of Fiji rugby. They've made quarterfinals of the World Cup, but they've never been here. What many people call the home of the game. And they are on their way to beating England. The former world champions. You didn't mean that. They will just keep ball. What are we? One and a half minutes. All good. Oh, wow, you see. Don't be surprised if they put this through. That Munster will have some idea what he wants to do. Berlin, Fiji. Savor it. Enjoy it. Last forward. Well. Somewhere Hookers down in. there is a player of the match. Now, I think you can fairly reasonably discount anyone wearing navy blue. Just but left, I think, just left. above all else, it probably would be more appropriate to give it to anyone. Anyone wearing white here. But that is the man. He had an early wobble, didn't he? He did, yeah. He, he should have gone lower on Johnny May, but Robert, <laughs> Amanda.
will remember this day as with Fiji, remember this day as these players will remember this day. We've got 30 seconds, England could, could score a trying to conversion and that will be it, they will lose this game. They will lose this game, I can't believe I'm saying that. Marcus Smith, on to Care. Care out to Malins. And it's in touch, and the flag is raised by Holly Davidson on the far side. All that hard work that everyone has put into Fiji and rugby, you can see the smiles, they're a smiling nation. I'm so delighted for them. World Rugby should have got behind them many, many times. They've had to do it themselves in a sense. They've got some guys, you can see this. It's party time at Twickenham, but it ain't for England. This is for Fiji, and they've so, so deserved it. Fiji poised to make it four wins from five in 2023. Fine. It's there for care. On to Ford. Smith. Smith to Marchant. Marchant. Important tackle from Revovo. But the time is out. Fiji can't be beaten. Whatever happens from here. And it's been turned over. And it's Caleb Munts who fires it into touch. England's fortress is the Temple of Doom. For England rugby fans, well, it's time for a bit of Chopin. The atmosphere funereal. England has sunk to its nadir. But for Fiji, it is simply the greatest moment in their rugby history. Pause for reflection. Every one of these men in white, a Fijian hero. Final score at Twickenham. England 22, Fiji 30. Well, let's put England to one side for a moment. Let's consider what this means to Fiji. Simon Rowe Louis there. And Joe Marler, a special word there for Frank Lamani. Let's put it into perspective in terms of where Fijian rugby has brought itself. They've come here, previously lost all five matches, never got within 21 points. They've won today, and it is richly deserved. We'll come on to England. Fiji, a tier two. They are going to be a tier one. They proved that today. The infrastructure they've put on, put into their, their game, into their country, has paid dividends by playing in their Super Rugby, having a club there, it's paid dividends, and just the fight, the spirit. They totally deserve this. England, again, we've come bound to them, but you can see they're, con they're quite happy with the control of the ball and everything that goes with it. They are a professional outfit, and they've just proved that today. What a victory. The island will be going bonk the islands will be going bonkers. As I said, the carver will be flowing and other things. Um, just just brilliant. They play with a smile on the face, but they put the nuts and bolts of the game to bed. They've got the line out now, they've got the scrum, which was amazing today. They've got the team. Well, let's get down the pitch side, shall we? Player of the match is with Sonny McLaughlin. Celestino Rabuthamanda. Well, Celestino, many congratulations. It's history. For the first time, you've beaten England. How proud are you? Very proud, uh, happy, excited, uh, grateful for the opportunity. Everything has uh, gone as a plan. And uh, yeah, big shout out to the boys. Always have my back uh, during training, and especially during game day. And uh, yeah, uh, big minaka to the fans that came out today. And uh, we will see you at the World Cup. Naka. <laughs> you will. I imagine fans at home in Fiji right now will be so thrilled. Can you imagine what you've just done at home? Oh, man, I, I just imagine the, the people at home punching their own houses on their, their own shelves, the kappa, as we name it. And, uh, yeah, we're very proud of the boys. And uh, this win is for all the people at home. You went 12 points up, but England came back at you. 
Where did that resolve come from to keep in the fight? We just need to uh, keep our discipline. Uh, it's the same. Uh, we lost a bit of uh, footy in our hands, and uh, yeah, uh, England uh, gave us uh, what we what we expected. So yeah. The World Cup is next. Wales and Australia will certainly have taken notice at this result. Can you get to a World Cup semi-final? No comments on that one, uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you uh, on the first match against Wales. Well done. Thank you. Well, Warren Gatland was among those watching on. That's for England. Well, well the headlines have been uh, pretty horrible to read for the England camp. As Steve Borthwick said before the match, a little bit of adversity has been thrown our way. Well, I think by tomorrow morning, things might have just gathered a pace in that respect. I, I don't know what he's going to say, to be honest, and I possibly don't care. Um, and Courtney Laws, love him, he'll, he'll remember this game for his 100th cap for all the wrong reasons. They kicked well on those first 10 minutes. They knew they were going to kick this, 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 you know, it's England's way. And they retained, I think, four of those kicks. They were putting pressure on Fiji. And then, for some reason, the second half, they just didn't defensively look good. And then they're chasing a game that they don't quite know how to chase. Marcus Smith did lighten up a little bit when he comes on because everybody pays attention when he's got the hand in, you know, he's born in hand. So. There's a big huddle going on there. Goodness me knows what, who's saying what or whatever. But I know I'd rather which huddle I'd be in. Fiji totally deserve it. England devastated. Um, where do they go? Well, they go to a World Cup. They've got a really easy group with Japan, Argentina, Samoa and Chile. But saying that, they need a lot of direction. And I think some, I'll tell you what, I tell, the, the players now should take control of this. Because obviously something is happening with the with the coaches or whatever the message isn't getting across or whatever. I reckon fix it, get get it fixed with the players. There's enough experience out there, and let them sort it out. Well, there we can see one captain for a moment is Wasi and Naifalevu wearing an England top. Maru Itoji having his say. Courtney Laws celebrating today is 100th cap for England however I suspect it will probably be as an England international the occasion of the team's lowest moment well it was bad against France in the Six Nations that record defeat and I was uh, stunned really by the ability of England never to come back into that game it never didn't didn't look like anything they didn't have a a plan B, and that's exactly what they didn't have again today. They gave away too. They gave away too many penalties in crucial positions. They did come back, and then they give away another penalty. It's that ability just to be in control of your destiny, the way you play. And that word I used, Martin, at the beginning of the game, you know, connectivity, to be able to connect from a kicking game to another form of attacking. And but for us, for me personally, it was our defence today. Let's get the reaction, shall we, of the Centurion, the man dubbed the people's captain this morning. Courtney Laws, his 100th test match. He's talking now to Sonia. That was a long old huddle. The England players were just in there. Take us into it. What was the tone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, familiar one, unfortunately. Um, yeah, just not good enough. Um, you know, we are where we are at the minute. Um, all we can do is is, is push on. Um, yeah, it's obviously really disappointing. Um, yeah, not much more to say, really. What's not right with England right now? Uh, we just, yeah, we just need to get our attack together. We're, again, turning over too many crucial penalties. Um, and, uh, and today, yeah, we didn't tackle well enough. So they've got some, look, they're, they're a really good team now. Um, they've got some phenomenal athletes and, and they showed it today. One-on-one, um, -on -one they, 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 um, they made us look silly at times, but 
Um, but yeah, we need to improve. Um, got two weeks to do so. You've shipped 23 tries in, in six games. That's a poor stat. What's going on with the England defence? Um, I, I, I obviously haven't rewatched today yet, so um, it's, hard, it's hard to say at the minute. Um, like, all, all I can say is uh, we'll, we'll go back, have a look at it, and, um, and, and, and do our best to get better. Courtney, I know it's really difficult in the immediate aftermath like this, but you know England fans are a little bit frustrated. You only have to see on, on social media. What would you say to them, given that your next match is a World Cup game against Argentina? Yeah, uh, yeah, we're frustrated as well. Um, we <laughs> I said it last week, we don't want to play like this, um, but it's up to us to fix it. So, again, um, we will we'll do everything we can to make sure that um, when it comes to Argentina, we, uh, we get on the right side of the, the scoreboard. Slightly sour, a 100th cap for you. What should have been an incredible occasion? It is what it is. I've got 100. Um, I'm very happy with that. Really pleased to um, to get my, my little ones on the pitch and let them suck in the atmosphere. So, yeah, regardless of the result, um, you know, I'm still I'm still happy to uh, to have achieved that. So you should. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Well, Courtney Law saying we are where we are. I guess those are the questions that will be asked of the head coach, Steve Borthwick. The antithesis of that. What an achievement from Simon Raiwalui. And also the man who led the side and scored one of the tries, their captain, Waisia Naithalevu. One of those 23 Fijian heroes. It really is such a special day. And let's hear now from the Fiji captain. Waisia, wearing England blue, but I imagine how proud are you of Fiji right now? First of all, I'm uh, very, very proud for the boys. Very, very proud for the effort we did today. Uh, that's our main objective, to come in uh, with a winning mindset. And uh, the boys executed really well today. We know that Fiji are full of natural talent, but you are so much more a rounded team than four years ago. In what areas do you think you've made the biggest progress? I think we have a pretty good uh, bond between us. Unlike other, other camp I've been in, I think this, uh, this group of men, and we bond well together uh, with the experience and the young, and uh, that's probably why, what you see on, to, on the field today. Is there just a bigger, a stronger mentality because you withstood England coming back at you, the, the bad weather? Are you just a stronger team mentally as much as anything? That's, uh, that's our work on. We have to stay mentally strong, and uh, the boys understand that, and they know that, and uh, we, we fight until the, the end of the whistle. Warren Gatlin was here today, coach of Wales. You're playing Australia in your group as well. Do you think you can make history as a team? You've done it today, beating England for the first time, by reaching a World Cup semi-final. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I have confidence in this, uh, this group of men, and uh, like we said, we're going to take game by game, and uh, today... We're going to go and celebrate, and then we work on uh, our first game uh, in two weeks' time. Can you imagine the scenes at home in Fiji right now? <laughs> Your fans must be going crazy. I can't imagine. 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 Don't tell me what that means. That means uh, to the people of Fiji, thank you very much for your support. The win today is for everyone. Well done to you. Tremendous. Naka.